Father, we just want to thank you for your grace, for your mercy. Anoint us, O oh Lord, we thank you for all that has happened before. And uh, all over the world, folks are saying they feel the awesome power of your Holy Ghost here. So bless us tonight as we look at this very important subject, part one. The eye and the doll and the doll in the eye. So bless us, O oh God, is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, you may be seated. Now, you, you keep that pity there for a little while. We are going to go into it in a big way tomorrow night. That pity is critical to what we have to say tonight and tomorrow night. So we're going to do a little change, but before I tell you about that, we want to thank you for coming. And it's a nice Monday night attendance. Come on. Monday night is the evangelist nemesis. Mm-hmm. So let's go. Anybody brought two? Anybody qualify for the Bible tonight? You brought two adults or two teenagers? Anybody did that tonight? You, what? One, two, three, four. Come on. Do we, we, have, we have the Bibles, you know, for the teenagers. Is, now those who brought, you have to give the teenagers, you know. And those who brought visitors, it's not for you. It's all right. Look them right here. So. We, we have the rest of the Bibles in the back. I wanted to go it in front. So, you know, we have what we call in politics transparency. So, we want to give out the gifts now. I think there, there's a box with them, the rest of them. Pastor, send me that all you're doing. Pray. Sit down next to my grandson, you know. Yes. That boy heard that I was in trouble with bandits and he never came to Digo Martin, you know. Okay. Don't blame him. Blame me, mother and father. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. If you're happy to be here tonight, somebody say amen. Louis, evangelist, how are you doing? Praise the Lord. Come on, the Bibles are in a box somewhere there. I hope. Pastor Charles and them didn't take them home, but then you And Debbie. Yes. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Now, tomorrow night, we have more gifts and gifts. Yes, look at them. They give out. Once they brought teen the adults, the, the, the pretty colored Bibles for teenagers. All right? Come on, go ahead. The, the, but there, where, there's the Bible in the back, man. The book, come. How many people we have to give out to? One and one, yes. So the adults who brought the teenagers, you? All right. Listen, see me? Give out what you have, sister. All right. I have to have a session with the ushers with gifts. The, the pretty colored one is for the young people, and the other one is for the. All right. We have the folks standing up too long. We have a set of Bibles in the back there, in a box. Come on, I want to give it out so people will see we're serious. In Jesus' name, yes, it's in another box. All right, listen. All right, look them there. Okay. I don't know if they're looking for them. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So let's go into... Now we're having a major baptism on Sabbath. Did I hear you say amen, brother? Come on, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Yeah, that, that, that is serious business. Now, I want to announce the winners of the quiz from last night, the online quiz. The winner, all right, is somebody called nobody. Nobody won the quiz. Somebody try a thing. Psalm 44. All right, go. So the, those who brought adults will get the, that Bible, the brown Bible, the Mark Finley Bible, and the one with the teenagers up here. The one with the teenagers up here. Okay, praise the Lord. Those books came from a special thing. All right, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Come on, give it out. All right, hallelujah. We got that. These are sponsored segments. All right, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I see the two ushers and Pastor Joshua doing a limbo dance, ducking underneath the ham ribbon there. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Some of them are here for the first time. So give them another round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. Can we proceed across there? If we have to do the rest of the gifts, we'll do it after the service. In Jesus' name. The eye in the dollar and the dollar in the eye. Okay? So let's settle down, please. Now we have limited time for a major subject. So what we're doing, we'll have part one, all right, tonight, and part two. And we have a heavy message there. So let's look at the one dollar there. If you look at the U.S. dollar, and I'm sure some of you had a U.S. dollar in your life, you will see the I on top of the pyramid. Now, 
uh, below the pyramid you have Novus Ordo Cyclorum. It means the new world order. Uh, uh, are you hearing me, my dear friends? The new world order. And you see the eye on the pyramid. And then you have the eagle. Now, what the lodges have done, they have taken, all right, they have taken the symbols from Revelation and used them for the worship of Lucifer. So I should tell you, in terms of the, if you see the order of the eagle, which is a secret order, all right, and they're heavy in the anti-drug movement, too, I should tell you, a lot of these orders have great, you know, great philanthropic ideas. Mm -hmm. Great philanthropic ideas. Beyonce, for example, known as Sasha Fierce. You know her case, right? All right, she's a very kind-hearted girl. And the devil is pushing the signal and the message that to be kind-hearted and compassionate, you must be a, his worshiper. That's how serious the thing is. So that we'll see a lot more about that tomorrow night. But if you see the eagle there, and it has a serpent on, in its beak. Are, are you hearing me, Prajinga? It has that. And there are 13 all over. There are 13 stars. Now, by the way, when did America get independence? Anybody knows here? July the 4th, that's all right. When they broke away from which, com which power they broke away from? Uh, they broke away from the British Empire. All right, July 4th, 1776. And never forget that, July 4th, 1776. Actually, if you look at the breast of the eagle, you have 13 stripes and 13 horizontal lines. You have 13 arrows, which is a warlike symbol. And you have 13 olives and berries on the other side. So it's a balance between war and peace. And what is the theory? To get peace, you must threaten war. All right, that's America there. Okay, now the 13, people say those 13 represent all right the number of colonies that signed the independence document however you should know that 13 is a sign of the witches organization 13 and it's also like the eagle a symbol of lucifer that's a luciferic number are you hearing me brother i remember when i come to peter christa night from the kiss band knights in satan service incorporated when i come there you will understand what is taking place so you have that all right, so 13 is critical there. By the way, the same year, all right, the same year you had the American independence, war of independence, and actually got the independence, all right, decree and separation from Britain. That same year, you had what is called the Illuminati. Uh, are you listening to what I'm saying there? And that morphed into communism and morphed into the Freemason movement. And Anwar Sadat, was the prophetic president of Egypt who said when he watches at the dollar of a Christian nation because what is their motto in God we trust are you hearing me brother Inga? he said he was shocked to see an Egyptian pagan symbol on the currency of a US dollar a Christian nation because the pyramid is really you remember where the, the pharaohs were buried in pyramids and horses were placed inside there, live horses there. So when the spirit wanted to take a little ride in the night to walk, he could jump on the horse and take a horse ride. And they'll put bags of rice, tons of rice and food, so the spirits could have a good diet. But don't think that is so strange, because I had a relative who was involved in the lodge. All right? And I heard one night he put my name in a piece of paper and put it in a bottle of acid. And, and the acid dissolved the paper. And that was supposed to be my destruction. I'm talking with a relative. Well, really an in-law, all right? Okay? And then his house one night burnt, 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 reduced to ashes. And the fire station never knew, have mercy, how the horse, uh, how the house, not the horse, how the house was burnt. And I was supposed to be destroyed. But I'm telling you, no man can destroy whom God wishes to preserve. So this is serious business. Are you hearing me, Prashinger? This is serious business. All right. And amazingly, that same Anwar Sadat, all right, who died, as you know, said when he saw at Camp David the peace accord, all right, with the Israeli prime minister and, of course, himself, he said, behold, the new Rome. Later on, later on, when the Pope visited America under Bill Clinton's presidency, the Newsweek and Time magazine had two pictures, a split picture. One half, they had the Pope, and the other half, they had Bill Clinton. All right? 
And hear what the comment was made. Behold the two halves of God. The Pope on one side and the President of America on the other side. And that quote came from a statement by philosopher Victor Hugo. Behold the two halves of God. And I want to tell you, the only church can really present this message. Did I hear you say amen, Brother Now we have forgotten prophecy a long while, Brother We are scared to say certain things. But the truth must be told. Come on, did I hear you say amen? You shall know the truth and what? The truth shall set you free. Now God uses whom he chooses. Come on. And let me say this about three chapters from Revelation. Revelation 11 is France in Bible prophecy. That is Wednesday night subject. Huh? Let the donkey drink the wine. This donkey loves communion wine. That is the French Revolution. Chapter 12 is the watershed in Revelation, the apocalyptic book of Revelation. Chapter 12 is the watershed between the historical progression, all right, and the symbolic towards the end there. Now, Seventh-day Adventists, are, uh, there are three streams of, you know, hermeneutical, you know, policies in terms of examining prophecy. One is called the preterist, the other is called the futurist, and the other is called the historicist. We'll have those three words up for you tomorrow night, I promise you. All right? So one is the preterist. The preterist school of thought says that all prophecy has been fulfilled in the past. The futurist says all prophecy will be in the future. And the historicist says there's a continuum. Some in the past, some in the present, really, and some in the future. Are you hearing me, Brajinga? So Seventh-day Adventist theology, especially the branch of theology called eschatology, last day events, is based on the historicist school. Because some prophecies have already been fulfilled. Did I, some are being fulfilled. Like pestilences shall come in the last days. Earthquakes. Are, are you seeing that, my dear friends? Ebola, for example. Huh? Imagine the girl taking care of a Duncan from Liberia. She has died. And Spain is getting more cases. And from tomorrow, London will do a screening for Ebola. Anytime you land in Heathrow Airport. The whole world is in trouble, my dear friends. You know, Ebola by itself could take this world down to the end. But let me tell you something right now. That my God will allow no disease to destroy this planet. And no militant, arrogant bunch of crocodilian rhinocerotic terrorists to mash up this country. This world, my dear friends, uh, uh, God himself will destroy this planet. No disease will do that, Brother uh, uh, And no bomb will do that there. Uh, uh, the angels are holding back the winds of strife. Uh, and that is why Ebola, now when Ebola first came many decades ago, they called it a flesh-eating virus. They call it that. Are you hearing me, Brother yeah. Now you don't only have Brother Merlin, you don't only have Ebola. You have Ebola, you have dengue, hemorrhagic fever, you have cholera. And by the way, the medical experts and the epidemiologists are confused between dengue and cholera and Ebola because there are some similarities with all three of them. Are you hearing me, Prashinga? And it is not God bringing Ebola. And not God. You know, some people say that. I've read some of my Pentecostal interpreters, no hard feelings to them. And they are saying that God is sending these things, Prashinga. No, 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 no. The devil has a laboratory. Are you hearing me? What does the devil have? What does the devil have? A laboratory. And what he is doing, he's experimenting, Prashinga. Because he wants to knock out this planet. Are you hearing me, Prashinga? But there's an angel holding back the winds of strife. Did I hear you say amen? Dragon means the devil and Michael means Jesus. And wind represents war, commotion and strife. And eyes represent intelligence. And seven represents perfection. And four represents divine management of the universe. Come on. And horns represent kingdoms. And beasts represent kingdoms. And oil represents the Holy Spirit. And wine represents love. Come on. Let the people say amen. Huh? Let's go to our first section in Revelation chapter 6. And the heavens departed as a scroll, but it is rolled together. You must come tomorrow night. I have a lot of documentation to give you tomorrow night. Several pages of doc prophetic documentation. And the heavens departed as a scroll, but it is rolled together. That day is coming. That is why you must be born again. Come on. That's why we have baptisms. You must be born again of water and of the Holy Ghost. You know, by the way, when, when you have the word of God, you see things differently to everybody else, you know. Did I hear you say amen? So I don't have nothing against those who wanted to kill me yesterday. 
in my house? No, oh my brother. Or oh, plant a gun. Plant a gun. Could you imagine a senior officer in the police force asking if I have a gun? And what it means is an illegal gun, you know. So that's a whole reputation assassination thing going on there. And you know, God uses whom he chooses. Because a Catholic police officer told me, Pastor, watch out. I had a bad dream about you. On Friday night, a Catholic police officer. He said, Pastor, just be careful. God gave a dream to a Catholic police officer. You see, men look at the outward appearance, but God looks at the heart. Did I hear you say amen, brother? And every mountain and island were moved out of their places. Let's run with the text quickly there. And the kings of the earth and the great men and the rich men and the chief captains and the mighty men and every bond man uh, and every free man hid themselves in the dens in the rocks of the mountains. Yeah. Are you hearing me, brother? Yeah. I see how Peter Menchel tries to make Kublai sing into a God. And I wonder about that, my dear friends. I wonder about that. There is one true God and one true Savior, and that is Jesus Christ. And said to the mountains and the rocks, fall on us and hide us from the face of him that's sitting on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. And what the text says, for the great day. Come on, somebody say great day. Oh, there is a great day coming. What is coming? Come on, somebody tell me what is coming. A great day of his wrath is come. And what? And who shall be what? Let me tell you who will stand. Those who believe in God will stand. Those who are covered in the blood, come on, will stand. Those who are filled with the Holy Ghost will stand. Those that have gotten victory over the beast and his image will stand. And tonight we declare who the beast is. Oh, the devil wanted me dead two nights ago. Tonight we are discussing who the beast is and who the little horn is and who the antichrist is. For the great day of his wrath is come. Oh, praise the Lord. If you love Jesus, somebody say amen. amen. You know, God is just an awesome God. We have got to prepare when we see Ebola and ISIS and the Pakistan-Indian war start back again. On the Kashmir border, it has started back. And Syria is having a major problem. They say in one country alone, in Turkey, they have 200,000 Syrians. A refugee crisis. Imagine a camp with poor sanitation facilities and 200,000 people there. Any disease could just rush you. I want to make a statement right now. Huh? There's a reason, and I challenge epidemi epi epi epidemiologists to challenge me right now. But I'm challenging them. You know the mosquito brings malaria and some other diseases, brother. But they say for AIDS, no, unless infected blood is on the snout, the proboscis of the, of the mosquito. Let me tell you how I interpret that. Let me tell you how I interpret the issue of the angels holding back the winds of strife. And I will show you something, brother. You know, it is God who went in Satan's laboratory and disengaged the plan he had. Because if the mosquitoes are going to give me AIDS, the whole world will get AIDS and perish, my dear friends. So it's God who gets in there. Come on, brother. When you think about God, let me say this to you. He's worthy to be praised. And he deserves an amen from you. Are you hearing me, brother? God is worthy to be praised. It is God who's interrupting Satan's plans. It is God, my dear friends, who understands how to guide us into prophetic interpretation. It is God, brother, who understands the demons that are trying to destroy us. God, brother, we need God in the morning and God in the evening and God at night time and God when we are happy and God when we are sad. We need God when we are lonely and God when we are people around us. We just need God when we are sick and God when we are well. God when we depressed. And God, when we are liberated, we need God. Did I hear you say amen, brother? I have 20 texts to give you tonight. So let's go with the first one quickly. The second one, sorry, Revelation 16, 12 to 14. And the sixth angel poured out his vial upon the great river Euphrates. Now, water represents people. I didn't hear you say amen. Dragon represents the devil and Michael represents Jesus. Come on, my dear friends. And wind represents strife. And horns and beasts represents powers and kingdoms. But water represents plenty of people. And earth represents a little bit of people. Are you hearing me, brother? And did the water thereof was dried up? The support for Babylon will dry up one day before Jesus comes. There'll be a split in the partnership. Sorry, as I was saying. And the water thereof was what? Dried up. That the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. Listen to me carefully. Anytime you see kings of the east, it's Christ and his army. You take that as goal and go to Republican Royal Bank and tell them you want a loan 
on that what I just gave you there anytime you have kings of the east it represents Christ and his army always coming from the east and one day he will come from the east are you hearing me brother? to put an end to sin and Satan to kick in the 1,000 years the millennium he will come from the east my dear friends to rest to his people uh, when the dead decree is passed upon us who are faithful let me tell you something uh, there will be about uh, and then she white in great controversy says we still believe in the spirit of prophecy come on uh, we still believe in the spirit of prophecy she says uh, before the ink is dried on the dead decree they will try to pass us out but at that time come on somebody help the preacher at that time shall Michael stand that great prince for his people <laughs> and Michael will stand for those who are standing for him now some people sitting down they're not standing huh? out of the mouth of the dragon out of the mouth of the beast and out of the mouth of the false prophet huh? there's an alliance coming are you hearing me brother? not a Trinidad alliance but a global alliance there and let me say this to you right now there's a difference in spelling between immorality and immortality you know what's the difference a t when you take out truth from immortality you have immorality give me a little clap for designing that now i just beg for clap now but what trouble is this when you take truth out of immortality you get immorality <laughs> the spirit of god you know put all those niceties in my cortical acreage spirits of devils working miracles uh, the devil is working miracles Hollywood is involved in that you know a movie, a, a movie called white noise you ever heard about it in that movie the mother is dead and the father is grieving huh? and then it gets up the devil have smartphone too the devil gone high-tech he has gone high-tech and in that movie called white noise mm-hmm in the night when they're grieving for the mommy who has been buried they get a phone call guess who calling the father mommy mommy whom they just buried is getting a phone call that is serious business sir Patrick. and they pick up the phone and he sees nice theology here it comforts the soul one day a brother tell me in a funeral in another church not adventist they say pastor why are you breaking people's heart like that i say it's better to break their hearts so they go to the kingdom huh? then to keep them falsely comforted false comfort is only fit for a fool are you hearing me brother false comfort is only fit by listen it is best to let people know the truth because only the truth will set us free hello let me say this right now we are prisoners without the truth come on we are prisoners without the truth i know if some of my church brethren are not happy with me what i say but brethren must preach the word brethren because Jesus coming I can't save nobody but a better heart say what needs to be said to people for them to be saved spirits of devils working miracles which go forth unto the kings of the earth and for the whole world to gather them to the battle of that great day of God Almighty and that day is very soon are you hearing me brethren the alliances politically right now will turn into a persecuting power to attack the people of God did I hear you say amen brethren where does, e, where does immortality of the soul come from? Where did it come from, my dear friends? Genesis 3, 1 to 8. Uh, and they said the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field, which the Lord God had made in the son unto the woman. Yea, had God said he shall not eat of every tree of the garden. You see, he didn't start and say, God is a liar. Don't trust him. He's carrying up a gum tree. And the woman said unto the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but have mercy of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden God had said he shall not eat of it neither shall he touch it touch it lest the water God had said and the serpent said unto her you shall not surely die now realize he didn't he didn't talk about had God said he got had God said no he said had God said crescendo decrescendo are you hearing me brother you have to watch my God my grandson you know he's singing with crescendo and decrescendo I see pushing the highs to the lows and the lows to the highs and rearranging the whole piece. If we sing for those ladies, you have them in trouble. Yes, you have some Luciferic tendencies musically. For God that know, have mercy, that in the day he eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened and he shall be as God's knowing good and evil. Let me tell you something. All the three unclean spirits like frogs, the dragon, the beast, and the false prophet, all 
of them push the immortality of the soul uh, that God is locked inside of us. Oh, Prairie and Free is the same thing. Sasha Fierce Beyonce knows the same thing. Jay Z, well, Sasha Fierce husband, Jay Z says uh, that they call him Jehovah because the flow is religious. All of them, all those Hollywood zombies and zombies. Uh, you don't know who's singing in front of you right now. Are you hearing me, preaching? And the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes and a tree to be desired to make one wise. She took of the fruit thereof and did it. And gave also her shipping up. Sorry, it didn't say that. And gave also her husband. <laughs> Since that time, women mesmerizing men. Lord, I know Alice won't be happy with that, but have mercy. Lois, evangelist, since that time, especially, and Nelly said the point 14 ladies, but anyhow, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did it. You know, after both of them ate, they heard the voice of God in the garden. You know what I like about that story of garden that we done? All of the sin didn't die immediately. Uh, but the process of death started. Are, are you hearing me, Patrick? The process of death started. Uh, but God is a wonderful God. Uh, uh, they should be running to God. Uh, but they felt their nakedness. Hello. Without God, we are naked. Without the Holy Ghost, we are naked. Uh, they felt the nakedness. Uh, and they ran. They exchanged a kind of glory for fig leaves. Everybody who goes against God, my dear friends, uh, is exchanging a kind of glory for fig leaves. Are you hearing me, preaching? Fig leaf religion has gay marriage in it. Ah, huh? fig leaf religion has smoking and drinking in it. Do it moderately. Fig leaf religion has Sunday worship in it. Fig leaf religion, my dear friends. Ah, huh? and the eyes of them both were open, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves apron. Adam, Adam, where are thou? Come on, this is God. You know, when we are at our worst, Jesus Christ is at his best. You didn't hear what I just said. When we are at our worst, he's at his best. They heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden. Adam! Huh? They, didn't, they, didn't hide, they, didn't, they didn't successfully hide from God. God didn't ask Adam and Eve, where are thou speaking geographically? It was not a geographical question that God needed a compass to find them or a, 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 a satellite in the sky uh, to find them, a satellite tracking device. Hello! God knows where we are every time. God knows where we are. In fact, let me tell you something about God. God not only knows where we are, but he knows where we were and he knows where we shall be. Come on, that's the God of the past. Come on, that's the God of the present. And that's the God of the future. <laughs> Have mercy. Uh, take out the T from immortality and you have immorality. Because if I am God, it means I am always right. And your truth is a different truth from my truth. And any day is a day. Who say Friday? Friday worship. Who say Saturday? Worship. Who say Sunday? Worship. Are you hearing me, preaching? Hello, there is one immortal. May I suggest to you, huh? may I suggest to you, you cannot be created and creator at the same time. The devil, when he was Lucifer, meaning bearer of light, wanted to be created and creator. But you can't be created and creator. You are either created or creator. And once you are created, you will never be creator. But you can be like, come on, you can be like the creator. Through the power of the Holy Ghost. When you're covered by the blood of Jesus Christ. Did I hear you say hallelujah, preaching? Peter Chris from the kiss band. You know what kiss band means? You know what KISS means? Night in Satan's Service Incorporated. And Peter Chris, they formed a band several years ago. If I trust my memory well, they sold over 80 million copies of their music up to 2009. Night in Satan's Service. They had a guy, have mercy. He's now 65 years old, Glenn Simmons. You know what was his nickname? Demon. Demon was his nickname. Have mercy. And that is why you hear they commit suicide. And they're in a mess, brother. Uh, all of them, Hollywood spawns demons. Are you hear what I'm saying, brother? Uh, and Hollywood is comprised of two major religions. Uh, uh, the New Age movement uh, and the Church of Scientology. 
Most of the movie stars belong to two religions, brother, that does not have Jesus as the creator and savior. Most of them, the Church of Scientology and the New Age Movement. By the way, the philosophy of the New Age Movement is, listen to it carefully, we were gods before, we are gods now, and we shall continue to be gods. In case you don't know, listen to this very carefully here. Come on, listen very, after going over drive, I have so much to say tonight. Are you hearing me, Prashinger? All of those people believe that they are immortal. From Michael Jackson of a plastic face fame. Are you hearing me, Prashinger? Uh, to this one, Marshall Jumbi Montano. All of them feel that they have immortality locked inside of them. Let me tell you something. We can be God and man at the same time. We can be created and creator at the same time. Come on. We can be divine and carnal at the same time. We have got to understand that. If God be God, let everyone else be a liar. If God be God. Look what Peter Chris said. Let me go to him quickly there. I find myself evil. What's that? I believe in the devil as much as God. What philosophy he has there? Freemasonic philosophy? That's the philosophy he has there. I find myself, I believe in the devil as much as God. You can use either one to get things done. What the secret I didn't tell you before is this. I told you that the Freemasons believe that God and Lucifer, because they believe there is no devil, huh? there's no devil. They said Christ lied on the devil. Don't you know that? All those orders. Huh? I met a big lady today, she's my husband, is in the movement, in the lodge. She was boasting about that. But all of them are saying that Christ has lied on Lucifer. He never became the devil. Are you hearing me, Patrick? And here, what is the real secret? They are saying there'll be a partnership between God and Lucifer at the end of the world. But, but, the one who will really be in charge is Lucifer. He will be in charge of Christ. Christ will be like the deputy prime minister. He'll be, he'll be McLeod and Dukaran. Never prime minister, only deputy. Are you hearing what I'm telling you, Patrick? That is what, oh Lord, oh Lord, oh Lord, have mercy. Have mercy on this book. I can't touch here. The whole thing fall off. Please, Anna. I can see a new being in front. Pastor Alexis, a new being in front of you. Hello, let me tell you something. I worship no man. I worship God. Because kingdoms rise and kingdoms fall. But Jesus reigns forever. When his kingdom comes, the song says, when his kingdom comes, oh, what a difference! Did I hear you say hallelujah, Pratringer? Did I hear you say amen? amen. Daniel 7, 1 to 8. Uh, Daniel 7, have mercy, verses 1 to 8. Let's make sure we have the right one there. Daniel 7, verses 1 to 8. That is a very, very serious chapter. In the first year of Belshazzar, king of Babylon, Daniel had a dream. And visions of his head upon his bed. Then he wrote the dream and told the sum of the matters. All right. Daniel spake and said, I saw in my vision by night. And behold, the four winds of the heaven strove upon the great sea. All right. Populated area. And four great beasts came up from the sea. Diverse one from the other. Are you hearing me, Patrick? Now remember, his grandfather had a dream, Nebuchadnezzar. Not so? Head of gold. Huh? Chest of silver, belly and thighs of brass, feet of iron, and legs of iron, and feet of iron and clay. Now, all of them represented four kingdoms. Am I talking to you, And eventually, they will break off into ten kingdoms. First was like a lion, had eagle's wings. I beheld all, be till all the wings thereof were plucked, lifted up from the earth, and made stand upon the feet as a man, and a man's heart was given to it. Are you hearing me, preaching? And I heard another beast, a second like to a bear. So the lion was Babylon. Are you hearing me, preaching? Uh, comparative to the gold in the image. And the bear, the silver, Middle Persia. And it raised up itself on one side. And it had three ribs in the mouth of it, between the teeth of it. And they said, Dust unto it, arise, devour much flesh. Are you hearing me, preaching? And after this, I beheld another beast. What was the beast, my leopard? That's Greece, speed in your waist there. We sat upon the back of it, four wings. You know, the Grecian Empire 
divided into four. Are you hearing me, brother? When Alexander died, not one of his sons could have held the empire together. So four generals came upon the scene of action. Are you hearing me, brother? Four generals had upon the back of it four wings of a fowl. The beast had four heads. Heads represent the kingdom. So when he died of a drunken debauchery, are you hearing me, brother? Intoxicated. And after this, I beheld and lo, another like a leopard, which had upon the back of it four wings. So the lion represents Babylon. Did I hear you say amen, brother? The bear represents Middle Persia. Come on. And the leopard represents Greece. And the beast also had four heads and dominion was given to it. And after Greece came this. After that I saw in the night visions and behold a fourth beast. Dreadful and terrible and strong exceedingly. And it had great iron teeth. It evolved and break in pieces and stamped the residue with the feet of it. It was diverse from all the beasts that were before it. And it had ten horns. Now hold a minute, you read as much as you want to read from all Christian authors. They call the name of Babylon as the lion. Uh, listen to me, the bear as Medo Persia. Uh, and the leopard as Greece. But they stop short, my dear friends, of talking about Rome. And when it comes to the little horn, watch it coming up now. <laughs> the little horn, brethren. Uh, that of Babylon said, that what the Bible says in Daniel chapter 7. Let's continue reading, ladies and gentlemen. Then the complex beast came. I considered the horns, and behold, there came up among them another little horn. That is the dividing line in interpretation in Christianity. Because the other, especially, and I mean no harm. Listen, if I say something to offend you, and that helps you the kingdom, you'll be glad for the offense on judgment morning. Did I hear you say amen? Everything is hunky-dory with the lion. Everything is hunky-dory with the bear. Everything is hunky-dory with the leopard. Everything is hunky-dory with Rome, political Rome. But when it comes to the little horn, have mercy. That is where we have a problem. Because all the religions uh, who are going against the commandments of God uh, and saying the law was nailed to the cross. And right now, I am not talking about Hinduism or Islam or Taoism or Buddhism. I'm talking about Christianity right now. They are preparing and started their walk back to Rome. Including the Lutheran church. Including Martin Luther must be turning in his grave. Are you hearing me, Prashree? You know, between 1990 and 2000, two major things happened. And there's an Adventist theologian who, like Bakioki, studied in the Vatican. Are you hearing me, Prashree? Yes. This one, a fellow called Thea. When you read what Thea says, you get the beauty in the thing, you know, Prashree? You get it, Prashree? Between 1990 and 2000, I feel it was a prophetic decade that ran right past us. So some Adventists saying, this prophecy not fulfilled, and that prophecy not fulfilled, when they already fulfilled. <laughs> it was between 1990 and 2000, brethren, what happened in 1990? It was even more prophetic here for this country, brethren. And when you know prophecy, you understand why Abu Bakr chose July 27, 1990? You will understand that, that's for tomorrow night. You will understand why Abu Bakr chose today, July 27. You will understand that on the brink of 1990 came 1989, when the wall separating East from West Germany fell down. It was in the 1990s, uh, you had Glasnost and Perestroika, you had the destruction of the USSR empire. Are you still out there, brother? Are you still out there? I'm saying to you, that was an awesome prophetic year. It was then the Anglicans and Rome signed the Concordat. It was then the Lutherans and Rome signed the Concordat. You have to understand, brother, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. And by the way, let me tell the church something. All over the world, you can't read and not study and you can't study and not read study to show yourself approved unto God come on somebody say amen that 1990 to 2000 we don't talk enough about that are you hearing me brother it wasn't the heart of Gorbachev to link up with Regan it was in the heart of the Holy Ghost come on did I hear you say amen to give us a little breathing space uh, so the, uh, the gospel could go forth uh, to fear God uh, and give glory to him uh, for the hour, for the time, uh, for the moment of his judgment is come uh, and worship him uh, that made the heavens and the earth and the sea and the fountains and waters. I sing uh, because I am happy. I sing because I am free. His eye is on the sparrow and he watches over you and me. Hello, praise God for power. Praise God for the blood. Praise God for the Holy Ghost. Praise God for the word. Come on. 
on. By the word we are justified. By the word we are sanctified. Thank God for the word. I consider the horns. And behold there came up among them another little horn. Before whom there were three of the first horns plucked up. Hello. There is one nation that has plucked up three of those original ten horns. One nation. One organization, sorry. That has political power and religious power. That's a little horn. Are you hearing me, Patrick? Three horns plucked up by the roots. And behold, in this horn were eyes at the eyes of a man and a mouth speaking great things. Let me come a little closer to tell you this from my memory. See, the more you study, the memory improves. And at age 65, I could talk about improvement of memory. So young people, you have no excuse. And say nothing sticks here. Stop looking at the porn and stop looking at all the Beyonce dotishness and vibes cartel who in jail for murder right now. I'm saying, set your affections on things above. Three horns were plucked up. Do you, do you know something, ladies and gentlemen? Let me tell you something right now. Those same three horns mashed up the mighty land of the Caesar's Rome. The same horns that was so powerful, they mashed up political Rome. And then those same horns with Attila the Hun, Alaric the God, come on. Are you still out there approaching? And all those mighty barbaric rulers there did, did, uh, they, they mashed up the, the political Rome. The land of Augustus Caesar and Julius Caesar and Octavius. Come on, mash them up. But hold a minute, the papacy now came back and mashed up those horns. That is what the trumpets are all about. Are you hearing me, brother? Revelation 8, that's what the trumpets are all about. Uh, coals of fire from the altar, come on. Uh, on the day of atonement, uh, uh, you have the coals, uh, the incense upon the coals. Uh, and the priest went to the, the most holy place uh, to confess his sins and came back out uh, and had a vial of blood this time. Are you hearing me, brother? Uh, he went in uh, with the censer uh, of incense, uh, the coal of fire and the incense. They're smoking uh, and smelling fragrant. Uh, and he came back out uh, and then he carried vials of blood uh, to atone for the sins of the people. He had to get for Forgiveness for his sins first. Uh, and he went to the most holy place on the 10th day of the seventh month uh, and came back out uh, and then went back in the most holy place uh, twice, uh, once per year, twice, once a year on the 10th day of the seventh month. Come on. Uh, somebody say hallelujah. Somebody say amen. Uh, uh, three fell. Even of that horn that had eyes and a mouth that spake very great things, uh, whose look was more stout than his fellows. Let me tell you something, you shall know the truth, uh, and the truth shall what? Uh, set you free. Are you hearing me, Prashing? Uh, should I go further, Prashing? Should I go further? You may get mad with the preacher for going further. I beheld the same horn made water, uh, war with the saints, uh, and prevailed against them. Uh, until the ancient of days came. Who is the ancient of days? Uh, the ancient of days is God, preaching. Uh, God the Father, come on. Uh, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost, and judgment was given to the saints of the Most High. And the time came that the saints possessed the kingdom. Uh, hello, live for Jesus. Uh, one day you will possess the kingdom. Uh, live and walk for Jesus. Come on. Uh, talk like Jesus. Uh, one day you will possess the kingdom. Uh, the fourth beast shall the fourth kingdom upon the earth, which shall be diverse from all kingdoms, uh, and shall devour the whole earth, uh, and shall tread it down, uh, and break it in pieces. Let's go ahead with the word. Uh, and the ten horns out of this kingdom uh, are ten kings that shall arise. Ten kings, uh, ten kingdoms, uh, and another shall arise after them, uh, and he shall be diverse from the first, and he shall subdue three kings. Let's move on there. And you know they subdue the three kings, the Herali, the Vandals, and the Ostrogoths. He shall speak great words against the Mosai. Well, the saints of the Mosai. Let me give you great words against the Mosai. When the priest at communion table says, Hoc es corpus meum. What do you say in there? This is my body. What does Babylon say? The little horn say? The little horn says that in a special sense, the bread is converted to the flesh of Jesus. And the wine converted to the blood of Jesus. Hoc es corpus meum. Speak great words against the Mosai. Think to change times and laws. Are you hearing me, preaching? And it shall be given unto his hand until a time and times and the dividing of time. The, uh, a time is 360 plus time 720 plus half a time 180. That's 1260. Look at the beast there, preaching. Look at the nondescript beast with the ten horns. And one of those horns shall arise. Uh, and speak great words against the Most High. Heck, hock. Hawk, 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 
es corpus meum. Hoc means this. Es is a verb means is. Corpus means body. And meum, the, the possessive adjective. My, this is my body. And the priestess at the communion table, in a special sense, the priest turns the wine into the blood and the body into the flesh of Jesus Christ. And hear what the scholars say. In that sense, the priest is the creator of his creator. You hear blasphemy? That is blasphemy. But it gets worse than that. You see, it shall affect the daily sacrifice. Are you hearing me, brother? So when the priest says, Ego te absolvo, a peccatis tuis. What that means in English? Ego te absolvo, a peccatis tuis. What that means in English? D, I absolve from thy sins. May I tell the whole world boldly and fearlessly under the power of Prince Emmanuel, under the power of the Holy Ghost, there is one mediator. Come on, somebody say hallelujah. There is one mediator between God and man. That is the man, Christ Jesus. Nobody could save us but Jesus. Nobody could change us but Jesus. Come on, somebody say hallelujah. Somebody say amen. Somebody say praise the Lord. Are you hearing me, brushing? Let's rush to Revelation 13, 1 to 6 quickly. Ah, huh? the little horn will destroy three kingdoms. We are the saints of the Most High. Do you know something, brethren? In the first three centuries after Christ was crucified and resurrected, pagan Rome killed three million people. In, that's pagan Rome, huh? political Rome. The Rome of the Caesars and the dynasties that followed after. Do you know what happened after pagan Rome gave way to papal Rome? You see, right after they plucked out the three kingdoms, the Heruli in 493, the Vandals in 534, and the Ostrogoths in 538. Right after, when they plucked the last kingdom, the 1260 day of prophecy kicked in. Are you, are you hearing me, brother? Because in Bible prophecy, a day represents a year. 42 months, 42 by 30, 1260. Oh, come on! A time and times and dividing of times, 1260. 360 for a time, 360 days for a year in their calculation. Times, 360 by 2. And half a time, 180, 1260. Look at, look at the mathematics on the board. Look at the mathematics on the board. They said a little horn will rain, brushing her, huh? for 1260 years. 538 AD, huh? to 1798 AD, when it got a deadly wound. Are you hearing me, brushing her? Are you hearing, brushing her? You shall know the truth, come on. And the truth shall set you free. You had Babylon, huh? and Medo-Persia, and Greece, and political Rome. And then you had the divisions of Rome. Ten divisions there. And the papacy plucked up three of them. They did what political Rome with the military might could not do. The Iron Kingdom of Rome. They couldn't do it. Have mercy. And I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up of the sea. Having seven heads. And ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. Are you hearing me, Prochry? Yeah. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet was as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion. And the dragon gave him his power, and his seat, and his what? Great authority. Now hold on there. Hold on. No, 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 no. Hold on to that text. Come on, reverse gear. Are you going to reverse gear? Let's go back to verse 2. Now, <laughs> No, 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 let's go back, let's go back, all right? The beast was like a leopard. Who leopard, who the leopard represented? It represented who? Greece. Who the bear represented? Medo, who the lion represented? So this is a nondescript beast. A beast who consisted of several animals. Are you, what that means is they had character traits of all the kingdoms before them. Are you hearing me, Prajing? And the dragon gave him his power, huh? and his seat, and great authority. There's a complex beast. Are you hearing me, brother? He's the beast of all beasts. And I saw one of his heads as he was wounded to death. And his deadly wound was healed. You know when that head was wounded to death? 1798. Napoleon imprisoned Pope Pius VI and sent him in exile. So just like now, when you have two popes, one living and one still living, have mercy. Just so you had two popes then, but you see, Napoleon did not know this text. 
If anybody asks you a question tonight, tell them Napoleon did not know this text. Hear what Napoleon said. He said the papacy had killed too much people. They had killed millions of people. Uh, distorted the law of God. They were brutal and vicious. That's what he said there. So at the climax of the French Revolution, Napoleon said, we must destroy the papacy forever. He says, I will do it. Destroy the papacy together and imprison the Pope and send the Pope in exile to die in exile. That Pope never came back. Are you hearing me, Prashinger? Never came back. God had to use atheistic France to discipline corrupt Roman Christianity. Oh, let me repeat that. God had to use atheistic France to discipline corrupt Roman Christianity. And I saw one of the says that were wounded to death and his deadly wound was healed. You see, after the 12, 60 years, huh, there was a deadly wound. But Napoleon didn't know that the deadly wound would be healed. And all the world wandered after the beast. Ladies and gentlemen, we are in trouble today with that beast. Are you hearing me, Patrick? Let's go to 321 AD. The Roman Catholic Church never invented Sunday worship. But they got it from Constantine. Sunday worship never came from Jesus Christ. A immoral murderer like Constantine, God will use to tell him to change God's law. Huh? In 321 AD, he wanted to unite pagans and Christians and Jews together. So he passed a decree saying that on Sunday, have mercy. Huh? That must be the new. And a church without a pope. I want all my Anglican friends and Baptist friends and Pentecostal friends uh, and Presbyterian friends to remember that. And I have to tell you, because you see, in these last days, uh, you have to preach truth that was never really preached before in every solid way. Come on, Brazinger. Uh, and things you never heard, you must heard. Uh, all of them left Europe. Uh, because their grandfathers were slaughtered. Are you hearing me, Brettinger? And their children were slaughtered. And their parents were slaughtered. They wanted peace. They wanted freedom. Not from a political power, but from a religious power. The little horn, the antichrist, that had awesome political power. Are you hearing what I'm saying there? They wanted a nation without a king. And a church without a pope. But the Bible tells me, have mercy. That this little power will arise. Lamb like beast. Looking like a lamb. But speaking. As a dragon. That is part one. Tomorrow. We will have part two. Are you hearing what I'm telling you? Brother? Come praise team. Hello. You shall know the truth. Come on somebody say amen. And the truth. Shall set you free. That's why we have to surrender all to Jesus tonight. Come on, somebody say amen. He said, Pastor, I never knew Sunday worship came from Constantine. I didn't know it came from the Old Testament. I didn't know it came from the worship of the Son. That's why we have Sunday. It had nothing to do with Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ never changed the Sabbath. Huh? Hello? Nobody could change God's law. Nobody could say they have power to convert wine into blood and bread into flesh. Nobody has that power. Hello? to make themselves God. There's only one God and creator forevermore. Come on. If you love the word tonight, somebody say amen. Somebody say hallelujah. Come on, let me hear you. Come on, let me hear you. Let me hear you say hallelujah. God is an awesome God. And you know what he says? I am God and I change not. You love God? Come on, let me hear, let me hear you. You love God? You love God, preaching? Did I hear that you love God? Come on, somebody say amen. Somebody say hallelujah. As they begin to sing the song, if you love God, stand to your feet. You love God, stand to your feet. Praise the Lord. 23 minutes. Who wants to take a stand for Jesus tonight? Who wants to take a stand for Jesus tonight? I want you to leave your seats right now. Leave your seats right now and come forward. You want to take a stand for Jesus tonight? You want to take a stand for the commandments tonight? The commandments tonight. Come on, the commandments. You want to take a stand for the Sabbath tonight? Wherever you are, just come to the altar. Just come to the altar. 
You want to take a stand for God's commandments. Come forward, come forward. Just, just take a stand for Jesus tonight. Take a stand. Those of you who are serious about going all the way with Jesus, there's a card we're giving tonight. We give it out on Sabbath and last night. But those of you who are serious about giving your whole life to Jesus, take a card tonight. Bible workers, where are you? Take a card tonight and sign for Jesus. Let your children sign. Let your grandchildren sign. Let your parents sign. Your sons and daughters sign. It's coming close to 20 to 9. Come on. Perhaps you heard the word for the first time. You heard the word for the first time. This kind of word. God wants to talk to you tonight. Say, Pastor, I never knew. I never knew. I never knew. I never knew. Well, tonight you know. Keep singing the song. Keep singing the song. Who else will come forward? You want to keep all of God's commandments. You were just keeping a few, but you want to keep all of God's commandments from tonight. You want to keep all of God's commandments. I want you to step forward from your seat and come forward. Wherever you are, just come forward. Take that stand for Jesus. Say yes to Jesus tonight. Because God has a plan for your life. God has a plan for your life. Wherever you are, I surrender all. Oh, yes. I surrender all. I surrender all. God wants to bless you. Before I pray, before I pray, I want to ask a little question. Are there some folks here tonight for the first time? And you heard the word. And you want God to give you the power to keep his commandments. For the first time, I want you to be brave enough to come forward here. I don't know who you are, really. I just had identified one or two, but you're here for the first time. And you heard the word tonight. And you want God to give you the power to keep that word. C could I ask you to come forward, brethren, for special prayer? You want God to bless you? Oh, praise the Lord. Come. Praise the Lord. Is there somebody else for the first time? A teenager? A young adult? Praise God. Just come forward. Praise God. Is there somebody here for the first time? You want God to give you the power to keep the word. You see, your friends may laugh at you. You might even have family members laughing at you. But judgment morning will not be a laughing matter. When you realize you've missed God, God bless you, sweetheart. God bless you. When you realize you've missed out on heaven, missed out on life everlasting, that would be another story. Sing the chorus again. I surrender all. You came for the first time, but you want God to give you the power. You want God to give you the power. Just come forward. Just come forward. You came for the first time. You came for the first time. Just take that stand for Jesus. Take that stand for Jesus. Take that stand for Jesus. Loving Father, loving Father, we just thank you for your grace. Your grace and mercy is available to us. You want to save us. The world is saying nobody can keep the commandments. But you are saying through my strength and my power, I will give you power to keep the commandments. Lord, we realize where we are right now. We're living at the end of time. The signs are telling us that you are soon to come. Lord, help us to stop getting ready and to be ready and stay ready. Lord, there are many who are here tonight who need to accept you. They have heard all kinds of stuff in the past. 
But now they realize where Sunday worship came from. They realize that your true day of worship is the seventh day. They realize since last night the winning number is seven. Oh God, give us the grace. Give us the power. Give us the urge. Give us the desire by the power of your Holy Spirit to serve you for the rest of our lives. This be our prayer in the name of the Father. Name of the Son. Name of the Holy Ghost. Let everybody here say. If you had a wonderful time tonight, somebody shout hallelujah.